so when you do a vasectomy reversal like this, we were watching the footage, some of that. I mean, it's intricate surgery. Yes. I know it's not foolproof, although this seems to have gone very well. Yeah, um, you know, a vasectomy done properly is almost foolproof. But a vasectomy reversal, no matter how perfectly it's performed, has a success rate of up to, you know, 80, maybe even 90% in a select couple. Uh, in a situation like Slade and Gretchen's, we're looking at somewhere between an expected uh, live birth rate of about 40 to 50%. But the surgery is very meticulous, very technical. Uh, the passageway that we're reconnecting is a third of a millimeter in diameter. A third of a millimeter in diameter. Wow. And we're putting several individually hand-placed stitches around that circle in two layers. Wow. And when things heal, they scar, and just the slightest increase in scar tissue will block off that passageway. So it, it is very, very technical, but of course some of it's biology too, how his body heals, how his sperm production is, how fertile she is, all of those things go into the mix as to why we're looking at a 40 to 50% live birth rate in their particular situation, even though technically I expect that that connection will work and sperm will flow through it over 95% of the time in my hands. Will well, you recheck his sperm um, yes. in, in about a month or so? Or? So I like to get the first semen analysis two months after the surgery, but they're allowed to start attempting one month after. And I've had several couples who are pregnant before they even go for that first semen analysis, which is, nice. you know, best news <laughs> possible. So it sounds to me like one of the benefits of this is it, it also takes the pressure off a little bit in terms of, okay, it's not this set thing we're gonna do. Once you're able to resume um, your activities, your activities <laughs> then it's, you know, it, it, it gets back to the basics, so to speak. Right. And, and so um, is part of your coaching in this, because Gretchen and Slade have been through so much, to not put too much pressure? Not, okay, four weeks from now, like, yeah. let's go. Is it, it's a little right. bit more like, okay, let's, oh, yeah. you know, Let's take the pressure off because we know that that can help increase the odds as well. Yeah, you're absolutely right about taking the pressure off because now they have the full spectrum of options available. Uh, Slade already has frozen sperm available for further cycles of in vitro fertility. And now he has the opportunity for, this, for both of them to have natural conception. But if ultimately this vasectomy reversal fails, they can toggle back to further attempts at in vitro fertility. So both options are available, which really does take the pressure off. And is it true um, that Slade getting a haircut will improve the odds? <laughs> it may improve the odds of him being able to have attempts at natural conception. Very true. <laughs> it is very, very true. Well, no, it was, it was really fun for me to think about, you know, every woman as a little girl thinks about you know, making love to your partner and making a baby naturally that way. And when you go in and all of a sudden the doctor's like, what month do you want to have a baby? And you're like looking at the calendar like, what? What month do I want to have a baby? It becomes very clinical. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. you know, I never have tried to get pregnant in my life. So this is the first time that I am trying to have a baby. And to be able to have that option back in the situation where we can just try to conceive naturally and, and be able to make love and have our moment together is, is really special for me. And, you know, at the end of the day, uh, sex is more fun than progesterone injections. <laughs> <laughs> well, and it's all about options and, and yes. your individual yes. journey. We want to thank you for sharing it with us. And yes, and best of luck.